Hello everyone, welcome back. Today I am here with another chapter of plant embryology that is fertilization in plants. As we all know that fertilization is an act of sexual reproduction which involves fusion of male and female gametes to form diploid zygote inside the embryo sac. So I will discuss uh, this phenomenon in detail in this lecture. Let's start. Firstly, fertilization. As I have earlier discussed, this is an act of sexual reproduction in which there is a fusion of male gamete with female gamete, that is ovum, to form diploid zygote in embryo sac or female gametophyte is known as fertilization. And this phenomenon of fertilization was first reported by Stress Berger in 1884 in plant Monotropa. So, सबसे पहले ये जो phenomenon है ये observed किया था stress pressure ने in 1884 in plant monotropa. In angiosperm, the male gamete are brought to gametes are brought to egg present in the female gametophyte by pollen tube. So pollen tube carries the male gametes towards the egg and this phenomenon is known as siphonogamy. When the male gametes uh, moves with the help of flagella towards egg, that phenomenon is known as zoogamy, zodiogamy or zoogamy. That occurs in case of some lower plants or in cycles. And the pollen tube was discovered by MEC in 1884 in the stigmatic tissue of Portulaca. So, the pollen tube that was discovered by MEC in 1824 in the stigmatic surface of plant that is Portulaca. Then pollen tube behaves as firstly it is a carrier of male gametes then it secretes oxygen to stimulate ovary so these are the function of pollen tube so during the process of fertilization firstly the pollen tube releases male gametes inside the female gametophyte so this pollen tube carries two male gametes and releases inside the female gametophyte out of these two male gamete one fuses with the egg to form diploid zygote while the second fuses with the polar nuclei or secondary nucleus present in the central cell to form triploid primary endosperm nucleus so first male gamete fuses with the egg then the second male gamete fuses with the secondary nuclei or polar nuclei to form the triploid primary endosperm nuclei and this act of uh, fertilization or process of fusion is known as double fertilization. So zygote develops into an embryo and this primary endosperm nuclei, nucleus develops into nutritive endosperm that will provide nourishment to the developing embryo. So two male gametes fuses two different components of the same embryo sac and this phenomenon is known as double fertilization because one is fused, you know, one male gamete fuses egg, fuses with egg and the other male gamete fuses with the uh, polar nuclei to form triploid uh, primary endosperm nuclei and this act of uh, fertilization is known as double fertilization in angiosperms while in case of gymnosperms uh, the uh, endosperm is formed after fertilization to avoid the wastage so this phenomenon was first uh, the phenomenon of double fertilization was first reported by Nwaschin in 1898 in the plant Lilium marga martagon and Fritillaria tinella so these are the two plants in which Nwaschin studies this phenomenon of double fertilization that is lilium and fertilaria. This term double fertilization was first given independently by Thomas in 1900 and Sargent in 1900. So they and these two persons have used this term double fertilization independently. Next comes pollen pistil interaction which is very important for uh, the process of fertilization. So movement of pollen tube toward the embryo sac up to the ovary through the style is known as uh, chemotropism so there are some chemical signals which helps in movement of the sperm tube towards the uh, egg and uh, there is uh, this uh, chemotropism is due to concentration gradient or difference we can say of calcium boron inositol sugar complex so ye jo, uh, chemical substances hai, calcium hai, boron hai, inositol and sugar complexes their concentration gradient help in movement of this pollen tube towards the egg and calcium in pollen pistil uh, direct pollen tube growth 
and pollen germination rate. So calcium controls the pollen pistil uh, and direct uh, pollen tube growth and pollen germination rate. Then boron, it enhances pollen germination. This is very important function of boron. Boron helps in pollen tube germination and pollen tube growth. This is the function of boron. Then we have some chemicals like flavanols, which are derived from tapetum, which is a nutritive tissue present in the uh, anther and also regulates pollen germination and pollen tube growth. So these are the functions of flavanols. Then pollen tube after reaching the ovary enters the ovule. So this is how this pollen pistil interaction occurs. Uh, there are certain genes which also helps in uh, germination of pollen grains. Next some important facts related to fertilization or pollen tube germination. Usually one pollen tube arises from the pollen grain which is known as monosiphonous pollen grain. It means it produces a single pollen tube that is known as monosiphonous. But there are some exceptions that is 14 pollen tubes in Malva, 10 pollen tubes in Elthia and the term used for this is polysiphonous. Poly means many, siphon means pipe like structure or tube like structure. However, only one of these progress further and other degenerates. So out of these, all the uh, multiple pollen tubes, only one will survive and that will function as the normal pollen tube. So this phenomenon is known as polysiphonous pollen grain. Pollen tube usually unbranched, exception that is branched pollen tube is found in the family member of uh, family Amentiferi. So in this group Amentiferi it contains the branched pollen tubes. Next important events in fertilization are as follows. Firstly, there is germination growth of pollen grain. This is the first step. Then second, entry of pollen tube into the ovule and embryo sac. Then third, discharge of male gametes inside the embryo sac. And fourth is movement of male gamete that is sperm towards egg and second nucleus in the embryo sac. That is the fourth step in fertilization process. The first step is germination growth of pollen grain. Firstly, the pollen grains are shed at two cell stage. That is vegetative cell and generative cell that we can see in this image. So on at this two cell stage pollen grains are released and they will reach on the receptive stigma through the agency of wind, animal, water, etc. So there are these are various agencies which carries the pollens from anther to the stigmatic surface. First step in first step. Uh, there is hydration process. Hydration process means this pollen uh, grain will land on the stigmatic surface and absorbs some water and gets swelled up or usse kya hota hai, jo exine hai that gets ruptured and the intine comes out in the form of pollen tube. So the pollen grain germinates on the stigmatic surface to produce a pollen tube by exine rupture through one of the germ pore and intine comes out as pollen tube or jo intine hai wo bahar aati hai as a pollen tube there is one branched pollen tube that is known that has been noticed in lilium regale so ye jo plant hai lilium regale isme dekha gaya hai branched pollen tube the vegetative cell that is the larger cell in pollen grain that germinates and give rise to the pollen tube ye banata hai pollen tube Whereas generative cell divides by mitosis and form two male gametes. So the generative cell is a smaller one. It will divide by mitosis to form two male gametes during the growth of pollen tube in the stigma. Next comes classification of styles. Style is one of the portion of the female reproductive structure in case of plants. Uh, the carpal consists of basal solar portion ovary which contains ovules, then the middle portion style and the upper portion which receives the pollen grains stigma. So this style is of different types. First is solid style as the name indicate. It contains the solid central strand with transmitting tissue. It, and it is mostly found in case of dicots like we have the Thura, Gossypium, Petunia. Then comes hollow style as the name indicates it means central canal is uh, free from any tissue so central canal running from stigmatic surface to the base of style so it's a hollow style as found in case of amaryllis gladiolus and lilium the next comes 
semi-solid style. It exhibits intermediate characteristics. It means it has characteristics of both solid as well as hollow style. So intermediate characteristic features are present in case of semi-solid style. And here transmitting tissue is restricted to one side of the canal. And it occurs in the family Cactaceae. And this type of style is found in case of family Cactaceae. Then there are some hydrolytic enzymes which are secreted by pollen grains uh, or pollen tubes which digests the female tissue and this digested tissue is used as a source of nutrient for the growth of pollen tube. Then three nuclei are present in case of uh, uh, pollen tube, one, two are male nuclei and one is the tube nucleus. So this pollen tube carries three nuclei, two male nuclei and one tube nucleus. Next comes entry of pollen tube into the ovule. So it uh, enters through various pathways. First one, pollen tube enters the ovule through three routes. There are three main routes for the entry of pollen tube. For the first one is porogamy. Poro means pore. So it is the most common type. This is most common type of entry of pollen tube. Here pollen tube enters the ovule through micropylar end. So the pollen tube can entry that is through the micropylar end and this is known as porogamy and it is found in case of lily or Isa sativa that is rice then azadi recta indica which is the name plant so ye jo plants hain inme jo pollen tube ki entry hoti that is through the micropylar end and is known as porogamy the next is chalazogamy so in this case the pollen tube enters the ovule from chalazal end so here the pollen tube enters through the chalazal end and it is found in case of cajorina and bitola then third one is the mesogamy. In this case, pollen tube enters through the funiculus or integuments. This is the pollen tube can entry that is through the funiculus or either integuments, and this is known as mesogamy. And it occurs in case of cucurbita, populus, and pistachia. Then next, uh, there is one plant that is Brassica oleracea. Here, in this plant, porogamy and mesogamy both are reported to occur in this plant. So porogamy and mesogamy both occurs in this plant that is Brassica oleracea. The next important structure is obturator. This is a st structure which helps in entry of pollen tube. So this is the structure here. It is a special structure found by placenta at the micropylar end, which facilitate the entry of pollen tube into the ovule by forming a sort of bridge. So this is a bridge-like structure which represent near the micropylar end and this structure is formed by placenta it helps in the entry of pollen tube inside the ovule soon after fertilization this obturator shrinks and disappears fertilization ke baad ye jo structure hai disappear ho jata hai se. and this is known as obturator and this is the function that is entry of pollen tube inside the ovule is the function of this structure that is obturator next comes entry of pollen tube in embryo sac so it occurs by different pathways the first the entry of pollen tube into the embryo sac may be the firstly pollen tube enters between the egg cell and one of the synergids so entry pollen tube it is uh, in between the one of the egg cell or one synergid this is uh, occur, this occurs in case of phagopyrum this type of entry occurs in phagopyrum then second pollen tube enters between two synergids so just those synergies hai unke beech mein pollen tube ki entry hoti hai as in case of cardiospermum this is the plant here the pollen tube enters between two synergies then third is pollen tube enters between embryo sac and egg cell here the pollen tube enters between the embryo wall and the egg cell this one Then fourth one is directly, uh, hair pollen tube directly penetrates through the apical region of filiform apparatus of the synergid. So these, these are the various entries of pollen tube in the embryo sac. Next comes discharge of male gametes. So this is the program for a diagram which shows the growth of pollen tube and discharge of male gametes. Firstly, the pollen tube contains two sperms. Each is a haploid male gamete that we already know. When pollen tube enters the embryo sac inside the ovule, it bursts to release its content 
that is two male gametes sperms along with certain amount of protoplasm so this is the pollen tube it contains two male gametes or sperm cells and in addition to this it contains certain protoplasm so ye discharge karta hai isko is embryo sac ke andar next double fertilization that is two types of fusion that i have already discussed so the union of two male gametes with different nuclei of embryo sac in is termed as double fertilization it was first observed by nwaschin in 1898 in the plant fritillaria and lilium syngamy it is a fusion of one male gamete that is haploid male male gamete with the egg cell and this is called syngamy and forms zygote which is a diploid structure which gives rise to embryo which is formed by the union of sperm and egg and resulting formation of this diploid cell that is zygote which is the first cell of sporophytic generation so zygote represents the first cell of sporophytic generation then triple fusion firstly the second male gamete now fuses with the two haploid polynuclei present in the center of embryo sac this fusion is called triple fusion as the three nuclei that is one male gamete two polynuclei are fused to form primary endosperm nucleus which is triploid so this is known as triple fusion because here three nuclei fuses with each other one is male gamete and the two are polynuclei so this is known as triple fusion so here sperm plus two polynuclei that will give rise to endosperm which is triploid this is known as triple fusion it results in formation of triploid endosperm nucleus which on development um, that is by repeated mitosis is mein bahut sari repeated mitotic divisions hote to form endosperm which is the nutritive tissue and it provide nourishment to the developing embryo so conclusion as syngamy and triple fusion occurs in embryo sac the phenomenon is known as double fertilization means there are two cells two male nuclei which are fuses which fuses with the two different cells or two different nuclei it is characteristic feature of angiosperms except family orchidaceae podostemaceae and trapeaceae so these three families are exception jinme ye jo phenomenon hai wo nahi hota hai otherwise it occurs in all the angiosperms so these three families that is orchidaceae podostemaceae and trapeaceae these are the exceptions next comes significance of double fertilization so it has very it have various uh, significance uh, significances firstly double fertilization give rise to endosperm that provide nourishment to the developing embryo there are chances of polyembryony and uh, plant has better chances of survival it increases the viability of the seeds of angiosperms then it used to utilizes both male gametes to produces uh, which are produced by the pollen grains so these are some significance of fertilization then comes post for post fertilization changes in flower so petals and sepals falls after fertilization zygote undergo number of mitotic division to form embryo then primary endosperm nucleus undergo number of mitotic division to give rise to multicellular endosperm that will provide nourishment to the developing embryo then endosperm provide nourishment to the developing embryo that i have already discussed antipodals and synergids disintegrate before or during or immediately after fertilization so this is again this type of changes also occur means jo antipodals hain synergids hain wo disintegrate ho jate hain either before the fertilization or during or immediately after fertilization each ovule develops into seed so what is seed seed is ripened ovule ripened ovule is known as seed integuments forms seed coat so integument forms the seed coat ovary develops into fruit so uh, what is fruit fruit is ripened ovary next some unusual features firstly x bodies so these these are darkly staining structures present near the tip of pollen tubes in synergids so jo synergids ke paas pollen ke tip mein darkly stained structure present hota hai use kehte hain x bodies and they are they were first reported by nwaschin in 1909 to 1910 jensen interpreted them as remnants of synergids and vegetative nuclei so jo जैनसन है इन्होंने इसे कहा कि दीज आर द रेमनस ऑफ सिनर्चिड्स एंड वेजिटिव न्यूक्लियाई जो पोलन ग्रेन का वेजिटिव न्यूक्लियाई है और जो सिनर्चिड है 
एम्ब्रियो सैक का उसके रेमनेंट्स हैं ये एक्स बॉडीज नेक्स्ट कम्स पॉलीस्पर्मी पॉली मीन्स मैनी स्पर्मी मीन्स स्पर्म्स सो मोर देन टू स्पर्म्स आर रिलीज इन टू एम्ब्रियो सैक रिजल्ट फ्रॉम डेवलपमेंट ऑफ मोर देन टू स्पर्म्स इन ईच पोलन ट्यूब और एंट्री ऑफ मोर देन वन पोलन ट्यूब इन ईच एम्ब्रियो सैक दैट रिजल्ट इन पॉलीस्पर्मी टू पोलन ट्यूब रिपोर्टेड इन एलोइडिया ऑइनोथ्रा सेजिटेरिया एंड अलमस तो ये जो प्लांट्स हैं एलोइडिया है ऑइनोथेरा है सेजिटेरिया है अलमस है इनमें दो पोलन ट्यूब्स की एंट्री नोटिस की गई है रिपोर्ट की गई है थ्री थ्री एंड फाइव पोलन ट्यूब्स आर रिपोर्टेड इन गोसीपियम एंड जुगलंस रिस्पेक्टिवली सो जो गोसीपियम है कॉटन प्लांट एंड जुगलंस इसमें तीन से पाँच पोलन ट्यूब्स की एंट्री नोटिस की गई है दिस रिजल्ट इन पोलीप्लॉयडी और पोली एम्ब्रियोनी ये जो प्रोसेस है इसके रिजल्ट से बनते हैं पॉलीप्लॉइड और पोली एम्ब्रियोनिक एम्ब्रियोज नेक्स्ट परसिस्टेंट एंड ब्रांच पोलन ट्यूब्स सो पोलन ट्यूब परसिस फॉर लॉन्ग पीरियड आफ्टर फर्टिलाइजेशन इन सम केसेस लाइक इन मालवेसी कुकरबिटेसी एंड पेसी थोरेसी कंसिडर टू बी हॉस्टोरियल इन नेचर मीन्स इट एक्ट एज अ हॉस्टोरियल नेचर इट हॉस्टोरियल स्ट्रक्चर इज अ पैरासिटिक स्ट्रक्चर जो कि न्यूट्रिशन को एब्जॉर्ब करने में हेल्प करता है इन कुकरबिटा पोलन ट्यूब इज ब्रांच आफ्टर एंट्रिंग द एम्ब्रियोसैक कुकरबिटा में जो पोलन ट्यूब है एंट्री के बाद ब्रांच हो जाती है इन वैन इट एंटर्स इन साइड द एम्ब्रियो सैक नेक्स्ट कम्स हिटेरो फर्टिलाइजेशन वॉट इज दिस हेयर टू स्पर्म न्यूक्लियर फ्यूजेज फ्यूजिंग विद एग न्यूक्लियस एंड सेकेंडरी न्यूक्लियस आर ड्राइव फ्रॉम टू डिफरेंट पोलन ट्यूब्स सो दिस इज नॉन एज हिट्रो फर्टिलाइजेशन हेयर देर आर टू डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ पोलन ट्यूब्स वन द कंटेंट ऑफ वन पोलन ट्यूब फ्यूज विद द एग द कंटेंट ऑफ अदर पोलन ट्यूब फ्यूज विद द सेकेंडरी न्यूक्लिया दैट इज नॉन एज हिट्रो दिस वॉज ऑल अबाउट फॉर आर टूर डिस्कशन अबाउट फर्टिलाइजेशन प्रोसेस इन प्लांट्स hope you will get some idea from this presentation if you have any questions queries and any suggestions you can give it in comment section thanks for watching have a great day